ferry crossing ahead. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another one. Um, yeah, we're on our adventures as you know, and uh, as you can see by the trail behind me, I'm not on land anymore. Uh, we're on the ferry to Harris and Lewis. Uh, we've got four nights over here, as you've already know, because we've mentioned it before. Actually, you probably don't know because this is actually going to go out Wednesday. I'll be seeing this Wednesday in two days' time. Hopefully, fingers crossed, if all goes well with my laptop. Um, I've never processed on a laptop before, so we'll see if it happens. If you're seeing this Wednesday, then all went royal. If you're not seeing this Wednesday, then it didn't go to plan. Um, as you can see, we're on the ferry boat. Um, Denise is sitting down here, and as promised, we're going to do you some question and answers. So uh, we, put out a, we put out a vlog the other day, um, last Sunday, wasn't it? And we were saying, you know, give us some questions, and you're going to have to excuse the size of us. We look <laughs> huge with all these layers on, don't we? Um, I'm not yeah. really that fat for ears. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to do some questions and answers. Denise has got me phone because she it's can read better dead. than me. It's gone dead. Let's open the phone up. Um, we had a few, we had a good response. We had a few questions. Um, I've done some screenshots on them, so we don't have to try and find a Wi-Fi section. And uh, yeah, we'll see if we can answer them the best we can. So right. first one then uh, from Mr. Project your voice, babe. Got me to hear you, <laughs> Mr. Ralph. Goldsmith. Ralph Goldsmith. Right. If you won an all expenses paid trip to a location of your choice, where would it be and most important why? Right, an all expenses paid trip, uh, where would it be and why? Um, that's quite a good one. I think the simple answer for me would be Iceland um, because it's top of my bucket list. It's a place I wanted to go to for a long time, so yeah, I'd probably say Iceland. But other than that, Faroe Islands, Africa to see the wild animals, um, Salt Lake deserts and uh, all the sands and stuff like that, Canadian Rocky Mountains, there's hundreds I've got on the list, but if you wanted a quick simple answer, Iceland, got to do Iceland. Machu Picchu. This Definitely is C, Machu, Machu Picchu. Picchu. Machu Picchu, of all places, eh? But yeah, I agree, I'll go with her. Right, let's try right, another question. That was a good question, that Ralph. Cheers, thanks for that. Right, the next one is, is from Urban Departures. Urban Departures. We thought this, I thought uh, this was quite a good question, actually. No, no, no. What advice, stroke pearls of wisdom, would you share with beginners, especially those who maybe don't have top end gear, right. looking to start vlogging? Yeah, basically, Urban Departures. Don't know your name, sorry, but uh, he was saying he's got a 70D and he's just bought a GoPro 7 black and an external mic. What? Um, He's a bit shy about talking. He said he's got to stand five miles away from people. Well, I'm on the ferry, there's people around me, and you get if you want to, to do it. it, do it. That's all there is to it. It's just people are going to look at you strange, people are going to ask you questions, people are going to wonder what the hell you're doing talking to yourself. But at the end of the day, if they're that interested, they come over and ask, and then you can tell them, and you gain a few subs out of it. So. People look at Paul Strange without his camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do, to be honest. It doesn't matter whether I've got a camera in my hand or not. Right, let's go for another one. That's quite a good question, though. That is, yeah, just just get on with it, just enjoy it, and uh, the people thing will just come as you go, as you do it. The more confident you get, if you're confident with your camera, like I am, I'm not too worried because I can talk myself, talk the hind legs off a donkey when it comes to talking about cameras, um, and I don't try and script anything, so I'm not worried if I cock it up or mess it up. Sorry. So yeah, we we'll just get on with it. Right, we've got another one from uh, Trevor Sadowski. 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 Oh, killed it. There um, you go. Right. This is quite a good one. Very good question, this one. Um, and it's one that could spark quite a few different conversations, couldn't it, around. But, do you ever see it turning into something more like a business? Or like me, do you just intend to keep photography as a therapy? Right. Do we ever see this turn into a business? And I've got to try and get Denise to talk up a bit, because we've got to overpower that machine pumping away behind us. So, uh, she's a little bit shyer than me. So yeah, do we intend on turning this into a business, or are we just going to keep it uh, like it is? Um, pretty much, we both got full-time jobs, haven't we? Mm -hmm. 
Denise is a teacher, as I've mentioned before, an assistant teacher. I work in pallets and packaging, making timber crates and packaging. Um, so yeah, to give up our jobs and take, you know, take this full time and make money out of it is quite a big step. There's a lot of people doing it. It's a very difficult game these days. iPhones, as you know, take good photographs. People are even doing weddings now on iPhones. We have done a few weddings. We do sports photography and the stuff like that for the uh, media center. MSV, so we, we, we make a little bit of money just to keep basically to keep doing what we're doing. Um, but we certainly, yeah, to keep buying new gear and tripods. But yeah, we don't we don't intend on making it a business. But I am going to start a website off. I'm going to try and sell a few prints because I've had loads, so many people telling me to sell prints. And I'm going to do a calendar this year. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try and make a little bit out of it. Why not? I enjoy my hobby. I enjoy the vlogging. I enjoy talking to you guys. And uh, yeah, it'd be nice if I can sell a few things as well, make it worth your while. Brilliant, nice question that one. Um, right. What have we got here? Blair, Blair Lindsay. Blair Lindsay. Right. Have you and Mr. C always done photography together or is it something you managed to talk her into and now she loves it? Well, that's an interesting one. I'll pass that one over to the good lady wife, shall we? Uh, the question was, if you didn't hear that, um, have we always been into photography or has Mrs. C always together. been into photography? Have we always done it together? Pretty much I've always been into photography forever and ever and ever, but I've only taken it seriously probably the last is eight to 10 years. But the other part of the question is... Yes. <laughs> my photography, I've always done it with Paul because he bought me my first camera. So, and taught me everything I know. Yeah, but she, she, she teaches art. Her, her main profession really for school is art. So she's already got the artistic eye and the flair, which is why she takes a pretty good photograph. Uh, but yeah, I gave her the first camera, I bought her a first camera, and then she's had my hand-me-downs, albeit very good ones, and uh, seems to use them better than I do. So yeah, yeah she's... Uh, she does, we just do it together and enjoy it now. Right, so... Uh, Nikki Fal Falks. Nikki Falks. Uh, she says about with masterclass with uh, neutral density, neutral fil density, uh, neutral density filters. filters. Um, Not convinced I always get the, ex yeah, the correct exposure. That's good, it's not really a, a question, it's just one I picked out because it's something I'd, you know, I want to do is I'll do a little bit of a um, a day out and I do, I do a graduated field to try and do a bit of an exercise. So uh, Nikki, I'll do that in the future for you. Uh, Paul Smith. Right, this is a bit... This is a long-winded one. Yeah. Uh, ND, uh, long N exposure ND filters. filters. Three, six, nine soft and hard edge filters. Polarizing filters, six and nine. Six, ten. Six, ten. I take it that's a uh, big stopper, little stopper. Uh, my question is how no. and when and why to use each one? I can't answer that on the ferry. This is a three hour journey, really? <laughs> um, but no, it's a good question. Filters, polarizers, stuff like that. Polarizers, um, if you're shooting with lots of sky in it and you've got blue skies, they're great for picking out the clouds, making the blue skies quite deep and depth. Um, the polarizer also eliminates reflections on cars and buildings and shop windows. And the most useful one is for water, really, to take the glare off of water. You've seen where we rotate the filter and the glare just disappears and you can see through the water virtually, it's basically for that, but it has the opposite effect if you're trying to get the reflection on the water, then you'll lose the reflection. So yeah, that's what polarizers are for. As for the six stop and the 10 stop, come on, you know what they're for, they're to make a really long exposure, to increase the time of your shutter speed, take it up to five seconds, 10 seconds, 15, 20, 30 seconds even, or longer. To smooth the um, water, isn't and it's it? Just to, just to move the clouds, get any movement in the clouds. If you're shooting street photography, as you've seen me do before, I'll put one of them on, people will move around, and basically you'll just eliminate the people. As long as they're all moving, and you've got the shutter open for 30 seconds and no one stands still, you'll get a clean street. Um, so yeah, again, these are things that I will do. I have explained in previous videos, so uh, yeah, maybe check out some of the previous ones where I'm using the filters. But yeah, that's a really, really good question and uh, something I'll do a little workshop video on that one day. Podgy Snapper. Mr. Podgy. Dave, you dropped me in it with my van, remember? <laughs> <laughs> and what a bad luck that was, my van broke down as well. But anyway, Podgy Snapper says, um, what PC and what are your monitors? Yeah, what is my PC and what are all my monitors? Uh, PC is a home built one, a friend of mine built it and uh, it's got lots of fast bits in it but it's not as fast as it needs to be and the monitors, they're just generic, bought them off eBay at a time, 100 quid a time or whatever they are, uh, a couple of 3D ones which I don't use, so yeah, nothing fancy, nothing special and I use Lightroom and Photoshop so and Premiere to edit my videos. Paul... Tyzak? Tyzak? I think it is. Sorry if we pronounced that wrong, but his question is, your preference, filters or bracketing? Filters or bracketing? Um, both. I can't answer that one. There's, there's, it's both. 
if I've got the filters on me and I'm using my Canon for instance and I've got all my kit with me then I'll probably use the filters to tone in the skies and stuff like that and make the exposures um, otherwise I'll bracket it's just as simple as what I've got on me at the time the Fuji I tend to do a bit more bracketing because I don't put the filters on it so yeah anything and everything there's no preference why it's just whatever I've got at the time whatever I shoot um, and there was one other question there was one more. Oh, somebody asked who did the cooking. Yes. Sorry. Somebody asked. Let's see if we can find this one. Find out who you are. Who you are. Uh, the question was. Um, let's see if we can find it. I think it was one of the first ones. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. She skipped past that one. Where are we? Where? Are we? This is real time, by the way. Real time. I can't find it now. Uh, the here we are. Was, the question who? was from Des. Gardner. Where are we? Des Gardner. Uh, and the question was, who does the cooking, who does the washing up? And he says he's only joking, but I actually think that's a fantastic little question. And the answer would be... Duh. Duh. <laughs> I'm using the camera and I'm editing videos for you. I haven't got time to do the washing up and the cooking. And let's face it, we've got a dishwasher, so that does the washing up. And the cooking, she's way, way better than it than I am. So, uh, yeah, that answers your question, Des. So, yeah, thanks for doing them. That was really good. We quite enjoyed that. And hopefully we'll do another one at some point. So keep asking questions throughout the videos and we'll stack them all up and we'll answer them again. So yeah, next time we'll see you, we'll be on Lewis or Harris, depending on where we start. We've got a few destinations we're heading to, and yeah, it's gonna be a good trip, four days. So yeah, thanks for watching, thanks for the questions, and I hope that's a bit of an insight to us and uh, me and what we do and how we do it. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Ciao for now, bye. Right, just before we go, We've got, I've got to take you over and introduce you to this guy here. Look at this. Look, look at this. Hello there. Look at this. Absolutely Everybody fantastic. Like this I've got Scotland. a bit of Harris tweed on my head, but not like that. Look at Fairly that. Fit. Oh, there you go. fantastic that is. This is the the Fillimore or the Great Kilt. The Fillimore, the this Great Kilt. Guy, this one's about five yards long. So lay out on the ground in the morning, then pull the pleats towards you. Pleat it, pleat it. Lie down and fold it over. And roll it round. There's different ways you can wear it. You can. You can wear it up here over the shoulder. Oh, that's the fighting way, isn't it? Aye. Yeah, that's... So that's, you would use a penannular brooch. Yeah. Keeps it off the ground. Fantastic. Or for camouflage, you can put it straight over your head. <laughs> and hide. Is that the, not, if, you, if, you find, if you find a woman, you know, you can get her underneath. Excellent. That's, uh, see, there look what go. special little pretty treat that is for you. <laughs>